Hello, and welcome to Wyverns and Weirdos, the journey home. I am your Dungeon Master, Darby, and joining me as always are Zoe, playing Sevia, Emily, playing Beatrice, Laura, playing Conrad, and Johanna, playing Fall. Let's jump into it. So where we last left off, uh, Conrad and Fall had a bit of a conversation about uh, Conrad's habits of running into combat, and Fall suggesting, eh, maybe leave that to me. Um, and um, what Beatrice discovered a pinging in her head that seemed to indicate where Zario was. Which um, the party probably uh, was warned of. They took a long rest immediately, hoping to uh, be able to outrun um, or, or get take the fight far away from Mordenkind and come the morning. Um, unfortunately, in that time, uh, Zariel had gathered up a legion of. Uh, Infernal devils uh, come storming uh, Mordenkainen's tower. Um, party is the party have all been buffed in various ways, uh, including Conrad having foresight, uh, Beatrice having um, uh, what having uh, been mind blanked. And Sevia Fall and Conrad all having flight and true sight bestowed upon them for a time. Um, and they have been basically mowing down the uh, the sky uh, sky ranks of this legion. Uh, and we return at the top of initiative, which is Beatrice, who is looking a little bit rough. Just, just a little bit. Um, so you said basically there's been a path cleared for her. Yes, between straight all to, the, between all the spells that have been cast. Straight to Zariel. Yes. Okay. Beatrice is going to uh, lay lay on hands on herself. She's going to yep. bash herself in the. Sternum and restore, uh, restore 30 hit points okay. to herself, which is going to take a while to actually do in here. Um, and then she's going to speed straight towards Zariel. Okay. Um, yeah, she says, you... Why yes. do you have to blade? Oh, this this blade? Well, I just found it. Thought you might like it back. Um, and she raises um her what is it that she has? She has a um. War, she has a flail and a warhammer, so she's going to raise the warhammer up as if um, about to go to strike you. Um, but uh, do you have anything you're wanting to do with your bonus action? That is a very, very good question. Um, let me find my bonus actions. In the meantime, the Araniers, followed by Paul, are on deck. Beatrice is going to 
channel divinity um, emissary of peace so as a bonus attack grant myself a plus five bonus to charisma persuasion checks for the next 10 minutes okay nice nice which what well, puts your persuasion modifier to 10 you may need it um, yes it does uh, the Aranyes are going to uh, do much the same as they did last time, so, um, except that everyone's within range now, um, so no disadvantage, except for on Conrad, who still has the foresight out and can see the arrows flying at him with generally enough of a uh, notice to jump out of the way. So let's start with the three on Beatrice. Uh, yeah, I said Beatrice, so. Um, so, looking at those, two of those will hit um, for a grand total of, so, so, plus six, so 13 points of piercing, plus, so that, uh, plus, so that gets it to, that be plus so 42 points of piercing and poison damage that is a very good thing that you uh laid on hands yourself uh sevia it's a very very good thing. Um, um before you uh start doing that any creature who makes an attack against fall has to first succeed on a wisdom saving throw or hit a different target Okay, I will keep that in mind once I get to, to balls. Just so quickly, as, uh, as for Sevia would willingly make a self attack. Yep. As for Sevia's, two hit. Um, okay, so. Uh, oof. The dice are not as kind to you this time. Uh, so, eight, plus, so 18 on uh, so far. Uh, 28. Um, 40 points of damage. Um, mm -hmm. Then, uh, yeah, wisdom save. So, do they have to make a wisdom saving throw for each attack? Um, uh, any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, so on a failed save, the creature must either choose a new target or lose the attack. Okay. So it sounds like it's on each attack. They do have advantage on these saves, though. Um, Rude of them. So the first, the first one, though, is still only an 11. Mm -hmm. um, Fails? The second one uh, will be a success because that's uh, 25. The third one will be a uh, 19. Is that that the, succeeds. Yep. So one of, one of them will come at you then. Um, oh, I still need to roll to actually hit. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I'll, roll, I'll roll. Actually, I'll roll the two at full first. Uh, one of those is a natural 20. Uh, the other is an 18, which just hits. So, let's see. So, um, if there so, are errors, I'll try to deflect them again. All right, so you can you can deflect it's one because it's reaction. Yeah. So, uh, good one, thing, it'll, it'll be easy. Um, yeah, so... You sure you sure you want to deflect the 18 one? You can deflect the crit and maybe halve the poison with the way that we're doing this. Oh, actually, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. deflect the crit. Okay, so you're looking at you're looking at um, 12 to deflect the crit. I got 20. Okay, <laughs> so you still take half the poison damage, which will be. Uh, so, uh, so 24 plus, 
So 36, so that's 18 points of poison. Uh, 18 plus, okay. So 18 points of poison from the crit. Um, and then, sorry. And then um, the other one is a grand total of, um, I roll poorly on the poison for the one that hits you completely. Uh, so it's only five of piercing, six of poison. So 11 points of damage from that one. Oh, excellent. Nice. Then I'll try to throw the arrow uh, back at them. Okay. Yeah. So. And while you're doing that, I will roll Ooh. against Sevia. Not too good. That was a 15 to hit. 15. Yeah, that won't hit an arrow. Yes. Uh, that is a 17, which will hit Sevia. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is, uh, seven points of piercing. Mm -hmm. Um, and 11 points of poison, so 18 damage all up. Sevia falls out of the sky. And She's immediately down. takes one death saving throw as she hits the ground. One death saving throw failure, um, unfortunately. Um, okay, and for you, you certainly see this. Um, Beatrice and Conrad, you're probably a bit too much in the thick of the fight to notice immediately. Um, Paul, it is your go. Well, shit. Um, yes, Paul is going to yeah see see the full and immediately. Uh start flying swiftly down towards her. Um, I assume I've got to reach her in 60 feet of movement? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Excellent. Sweet. Um, yeah, like, no matter what, even if I evoke attacks of opportunity from those around me, I'm still going to go down and kind of, like, like kind of um he's flying down like vertically downwards and the kind of upside down is gonna like grab her hand and um cast the level uh cure wounds okay uh so that's 22 points of health and then he's gonna kind of flip down to so he's standing on his feet and um uh he's gonna say um Savia, are you right? Um, come on, come on. Uh, you can hang in there. L let's do this. And so that's uh, body inspiration um, healing as well. All right. So that's that's your turn. Uh, to... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Conrad, it's your turn. This is Aaron. You guys are annoying. I'm going to attack one. All right. Let's go. Um, so, first one, advantage. Um, what's that? 15. Conrad gets a very horrible grin on his face as he lunges at this Aranye and I get a nat 20. Nice. <laughs> um, cool. So, I'll take a quick picture and yeah. then um, I will roll damage. So, yeah. and um, you have and advantage. Going... So, you do get that. Uh, yeah, I get my full that sneak maximized attack. Maximized so. plus rolled sneak attack. So, three times six full up is 18 and what i'm going to do is um i have the grave touch feat so basically it means that i can change um uh damage into a certain type of damage so i'm going to change ah uh, yes oh although i'm pretty sure they're, they're resistance to necrotic as well though. they are not but anyway oh they're not cool they're the not. fire damage is now necrotic damage yeah they are resistant um, <laughs> to cold immune to poison and fire but yeah, oh, cool. this the other creature. Necro Excellent. Necrotic doesn't tend to be a thing with uh with ah, fantastic. devils. Awesome. Um, cool. So so all up there, I don't know whether you like because Grave Touch converts the energy so again the flames like burst out of it, but then turns this horrible sick kind of energy as he just yeah, grinning wildly, just um charges at them. And um so I don't know whether you want to flavor that, but like 3d6 for sneak attack is plus 18 already. Um, yeah. And he does a d8 plus 7, so it's an 8 plus a 7 for his, the sneak attack stuff. Yeah. So that's 33 points of damage all up. And then um, do you want to add the fire thing on top of that for the 
and then I'll roll. Um, yeah, if you fire damage is two d ten, so would that but convert to necrotic damage? If you're does that count for crit? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. every damage dice gets maximized and then roll. Awesome. So at a so baseline, that's... we have fifty three points of damage, and now I'm going to roll. Um, so fifty three so... plus this two d ten. Yeah. Um, um, oh, so I haven't rolled my stuff yet. Fifty three is just the baseline of like you know oh, damage plus 53... sneak attack. Plus the sneak attack, plus the sword, plus yeah. the two. D- that's my oh. full damage, and I haven't, I haven't rolled yet. So hang on. So that's a, a five. Oh my god. Plus a seven. So we're up to sixty-five. And now my sneak attack. Um. So seven. The third one. Okay. Cool. Seven plus five. Okay. Cool. Uh, sorry. Just one moment. Sorry, my calculator crashed itself. So it's 53 plus 12 was my um, sneak attack damage plus the 2d10. Um, so, which was a so 4 out of 10. Awesome. Thus far. So, so, so and then uh, 14 um, for the, um, the necrotic fire damage. So 91 points of damage. A Excellent. Oh, of- actually, hang on. I need to double check one feature really quickly. I think, yeah, cool. On Piercer, when I do a critical hit, I could roll one additional damage die, so I get another D8. Now, I think, Ooh. yeah, so that one doesn't get maximized because of, like, yeah, it yeah. being a, on a crit, you but get this. But I add one. But I roll an still, extra one. Yeah. So that's a six damage on top of that. <laughs> All right. And that's so, my first attack. So that's 97 points of damage on the one attack. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, um, I rolled to hit again, I guess. Yeah, this Aaron is, is still standing, but or still flying, but very shaky. Not for long. Seventy. Uh, so my so like a twenty-nine to hit. Um, yeah. So that yeah. will hit. Um, so a D eight. So I keep rolling fives for some reason. So it's so a five plus a seven. So it's 12 base damage, and then I don't add sneak attack, but I do add the fire damage, which is... Oh, which I need to double check the rules on that one for, actually, because I How don't know whether the necrotic... Do it? Yeah, I'm just going to see. Um, um, he's grave touched. How, uh, how much damage have you gotten up to thus far? It says once per turn when you hit with an attack roll and deal damage, oh, you can replace the damage with the necrotic damage. So okay, I think it's, it's only once, once. once yeah. per turn. Okay. So basically, I've rolled 12 points of damage for the second attack. Um, that I add the fire onto it. So yeah. that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, um, that's that's enough to slice this Aranias down. Excellent. And bonus action full of dread. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Um, he maneuvers through the sky like a, a, a dancer, um, like the, the fencing little artist that he is, um, and just, uh, yeah, completely manages to gut them like through the neck, I suppose. Um, and while he does that, he gets into just kind of like judders and um, his eyes like weep with a golden color as he turns around to face the rest of the Erinios. Cool. Wow. If they, the other thing that this thing does is that if they, weren't, if they weren't already at disadvantage to attack you from the foresight, they would be now because you're in melee with them. Yes, yes, true. Excellent. Um, if that creature had also lived, I would have gotten it to do a save, wisdom saving throw. Oh, not yet, actually, but soon. Fun. All right. This is incredible. I'll just say, like, the previous day, Conrad was like, I'm not that good at combat. Four, you're better than me at combat. <laughs> no. Conrad's Dude. basically good if he crits, and otherwise he pales in comparison. But yeah, yes, there awesome. we go. That's awesome. <laughs> um, He's having a good time right now with this precise moment. Pit fiends are actually probably close enough to you now that they're gonna they're gonna try their luck with you. They well, can try. Ones, yeah, one at least will. Um, nat one for the first for the what is it the bite attack? Then claw. That's yeah. That's not gonna be enough. That will be so one claw. Okay. Uh, oh no, so it's the mace. Which is still, yeah. And then the tail mace. So you get from the first one, you have the mace hit you. 
for uh, f- uh, 13 points of bludgeoning and 21 points of fire damage. Oh, okay. Uh, Alrighty. <laughs> and 34 points of damage all up. How much did you get in temp from your... Oh, I got eight points, so that's that's eight. out. Um, eight, so yeah. that's twenty six that carries. Oh, over. Um, uncanny dodge! I would like to so have that, please. Okay. Um, so so half the fire damage, or no, it halves the entire it was... attack. It's the one. Oh, attack. cool. So, uh, right, so. so thirty four, so fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, uh-huh. which means that it's nine that carries over to your actual hit points. Okay. okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, the, the, um, yes. Actually, uh, yeah. Okay. So second one is going to. Second one's going to try to fireball Beatrice. Um, so Beatrice, can you roll me a dexterity saving throw, please? I sure can. Uh, 29. 29? Okay. Um, that is enough to simply take half damage. So. Um, and then that damage is halved? Yes. So in the end, you only take. I roll poorly on this one, so you only take five points of fire damage. Cool. Um, and the third pit fiend is going to use a wall of fire to separate Sevier and Fall from the rest of what's going on. Um, How far away are they? Uh, probably. I mean, yeah, they're probably they're probably within range of a. They're just within range of a counter spell if that's what you're inching for. Please. Okay, roll me, roll me. What? Well, what level are you casting it at? Just the third, or? Uh, I counter spell it at fifth level. Gone. Doesn't happen. Okay, uh, and it's your turn. So you oh, immediately God. get your reaction back. Yay! <laughs> Hell yeah! I love to game the system. Um, okay, so Sylvia <gasps> wakes up. Four? Wakes up, counter spells. <laughs> well, no, she wakes up and she goes, Fall? Was I just up? Oh, God! Counter spell. <laughs> um, and then as that dissipates into the blue sparkles that always occur, she goes, Thank you. Oh, we need to get back up there. Of course, can you still fly? Yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, do you still want to be big or do, would you rather we just go for it? Uh, oh, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, yes, sure. If... All right. And she is going to um, using the the staff would have like fall into her side when she fell she's gonna pick it back up and in this smooth motion kind of pass it over fall as she uses it to cast enlarge reduce which actually happens at will so uses no charges oh wow on that one mm-hmm. uh so fall becomes big and the big thing about that is that fall now gets an extra d4 per attack uh, which for a monk is insane. Mm. Um, and then she will. Uh... How far are we away from like the front line? Uh... About about <laughs> thirty feet. Okay, she's gonna go back up in the sky. Yeah. Uh, not as close as she was before. She would like to try and. Um... While still in range for the majority of her magic, which is 60 to 120, she would like to uh, be make it a bit more difficult to get hit with arrows. Yep. Okay. Uh, Remaining imps can't really do much of uh, anything. Mordenkainen is 
he is going to, uh, he's, he's gonna drop the Storm Sphere, uh, in favor of maybe something else. Um, if not, he will just, um, do something, um, that doesn't, but the Storm Sphere has served its purpose, it has, uh, separated them, it has cleared a path for Beatrice. Um, which Conrad has also been able to make use of. Um, Alright. Um, he is going to... Yeah, he's, he's gonna uh, do a lightning bolt at 5th level. Um, that... It kind of just... Uh, no, because he doesn't have the range for it. Unfortunately, um, he's going, mm, mm, I, I wish he didn't have so few things that can be done from a distance. Um, he, uh, you know what, what is, what is magic missile gun range? Uh, yeah, he, he's, got, he's just going to take out some imps with some magic missiles. Um, cast it at a higher level, get pretty much the remainder of the imps. Uh, and that, uh, like there's still some imps flying around, but none that really are gonna be able to get to anything. Uh, Horn Devil, um, they're not quite close enough to where you are. Fun raid at this point. No, they're, they're gonna. They are, but they're gonna try to um, coax the ground troops forward, as are, the bone, as are the bone devils, um, in order to charge at the castle. Um, then we get to Zariel's turn. Um, she is going to follow through with what we uh, foreshadowed on your turn, Beatrice, and uh, attack you with, uh, Metallitoc. Um, a Warhammer. Um, and that is gonna start with, that is a 32 to hit. Um, which will do a grand total of, so it'll do 18 points of uh, 18 points of bludgeoning. Um, uh, ooh, 38 points of fire halved to 19. And emits a burst of cold that does 7 points of cold damage. Seven points is exactly what Beatrice had left. Beatrice plummets from oh. the sky. Um, and yeah, you take a death saving throw failure as you hit the ground. Um, but you notice um, as as you would be dropping the blades, the sword the sword of Zariel remains at height while the sun sword falls down with you. And those of you still conscious see Zariel eye the blade curiously. Uh, spine devil's pretty much useless at this point until uh, Paul charges back in. Beatrice, roll me a death saving throw, please. It's an 18. 18, so that's, so you've got one success, one failure. Okay. Uh, the Aranyes, uh, they're gonna swap weapons to their long swords, um, and go, all go for Conrad. Um, so, uh, that is a 20, which I believe hits. 
So that's yep, one. that hits. Uh, 18 minus 2. Uh, that misses. That hits. That misses. Well, that misses. That misses. Of course. I'm that limbo. misses. That misses. So only <laughs> two attacks of oh, the nine God. hit. All right. Um, so. He is uh, just spinning. <laughs> they are. They are well. So that will be a total of. Uh, so nine. Uh, so 20, 25 points of slashing damage. And. Uh, uncanny dodge, I believe. Oh no, it's not my turn. Not been my turn yet. So yes. Yeah. I don't think that activates. Uh, cool. No. So twenty. So. Twenty-five yeah. slashing was it? Twenty-five slashing between the two attacks and twenty-seven poison between the two. Oh, okay. All right. So that's 52 points of damage all up. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Paul, it is your go. You see Beatrice uh, knocked to the ground. Um, you, Sevier is still quite shaky. Uh, and you and Conrad are not looking in the greatest shape either. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, Paul kind of like um, uh, rapidly increases in his size and is like, alright, alright, I'm gonna punch some of them, yeah. then meanwhile, everyone the, gets attacked. Yeah. Like, oh, come on. Meanwhile, the blade of Zariel um, floats in front of Zariel herself. Yes. Um, is there enough range for this? Is everyone within 60 feet of me? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, because you've only flown, you only would have flown 60 feet up, so even Beatrice on the ground would be. Okay, I'll use a very useless spell then. Uh, oh no, um, everyone, hang in on, hang in there, we can do this. And everyone will get 7 HP. Look, that's enough to get Beatrice back up. Yeah, Beatrice is alive again, that, that, that's good. Um, so that's my bonus action. I, I will head towards... Uh, are there any creatures near Zeriel or near Beatrice specifically? Um, uh, near Beatrice, no, because the rest of them are kind of forging their way towards the tower. Um, near Zariel, no. Okay, um, okay. Um, okay, I guess in that case, Fall will uh, look towards Conrad, seeing that he's somewhat um, being swarmed by um, enemies, and will go to uh, the nearest one and start a uh, flurry of blows. All right, uh, roll to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's 25 to hit. That'll hit. And that's uh, eleven. You, so you've already you've already used uh, heal, the mass healing word, so you can't fire yeah. blows. You can only do your two attacks. Oh uh, yeah, no, that's true. Just the yeah. two attacks. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good point. Um, yeah. So that is eleven damage plus one twelve damage. All right. Um. Hmm. Is it worth it? No, I'll just hit another one again. Okay. And then. Uh, Almost an at 20, that's a 15 to hit. Okay, uh, that misses, unfortunately. Right. I'll do a better plan next time. All right, um, that's full scope. <laughs> All right, Conrad, is your go. Now you get your reaction back. Hmm, okay. Um. There are, I believe, two Araniers and a Pit Fiend. Yeah. Around you. But also fall. Yes, and they have surrounded me. Uh, not so much surrounded, but they are all engaged with you in combat. Okay, um, alright, so... Who will I attack? I'll roll a d- I'll roll a d4 and we'll pick one of the three. Yeah. It's four. Oh, it's a four, it's four! I attack four! <laughs> Let's do that again. It's a well, four, four again! Well, there's three Araniers and a Pit Fiend, so... If oh, you wanted okay. to go with four, four that fiend, would be the Pit Fiend. Let's yeah. go. Um... Uh, awesome. All right, so, and then I'm gonna 
so at advantage. Um, so that is well, it's a six, natural sixteen, so like a twenty-eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that hits. Cool. So get my little calculator out. So a D eight, which is oh, a two. Okay. Plus natural no, seven. Plus uh, my sneak attack die, which is a total of six. Okay, 11. Um, and then I will convert my um, fire damage to necrotic damage. Yep. Who knows? We'll see if it works. Cool, which is an additional 16 points of necrotic damage, so all 36 right. points all up for that one. Um, and then I will um, I will attack again. Yep. Um, so 36 on the first. Oh, that's lucky it's an advantage because that wasn't that one. Okay, the second one is a 19. I don't think that did. It just hits. Oh, no, no, natural 19. Oh, natural so that 19. Handily hits. No, um, yeah. That handily hits. Yeah, no, it's only the. I got confused with my other character. I was like, oh, it's, that's a crit. It's, like, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's only the hex blade and certain, uh, <laughs> yeah. certain um, fighter subclasses. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is cool. That's fine. Um, so. That's all good. I still get to roll damage. Damage. So that is uh, 4 plus 7, so 11 points of damage. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, yeah, still got the bonus action. Yeah. Um, can I say something and also use, just use a bonus action? Yeah. Okay, so bonus action, I'm going to do, do Form of Dread again. Give me some yep. extra hit points. 13 extra hit points. I need that. Um, now, as a mastermind rogue, I have the ability to, um, if I've heard someone talking for more than a minute, I can mimic their voice and um, their speech patterns perfectly. Um, yes, you so can. I can't remember their voice. Conrad's going to call out the voice of the um, the uh, custodian of the sword, who was oh. Zariel's close friend. Um, and again, yeah. I can't remember what she sounded like, but yeah. he's going to go, um, uh, with, with, with the feminine character. Uh, Zario, you, you must listen. You, you must take the sword. It will see you to victory. It will, it will help you. And that's what he calls out. Yeah. Probably um, obscured by all the pit themes or whatever. Roll, uh, I, yeah, roll me a persuasion check, uh, with advantage for Yale's voice. Excellent, Gail, that's right. Cool. Although I guess Excellent. you already have advantage from foresight, I think. True, true, true. Yeah. Um, awesome. I am going to burn what? my last that, point that'll, of... That'll probably oh. reduce the DC then, that, that it's, okay. it's Yale's voice. Though. I'm going to burn my last point of inspiration, because both of yeah. us were not great. So that's... He has no inspiration left now. Let's go. Um, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so what's his persuasion? A plus seven, surprisingly, for Conrad. So that is a 19. 19. So who knows? You, you see, That's his you, attempt. Yeah, you see a kind of thought register within Zariel, but she quickly kind of shakes it off. That's um, fair. I can probably barely see her expression at this point anywhere. I'm surrounded. And uh, that's the end of Conrad's turn. Yeah. Uh, next is the pit fiend that you just walloped, uh, who is going to wallop you in return. Um, okay, so let's start the bite. Uh, nope, that's only a 17. Um, that is a 9 plus 14, so yeah, 23. Uh, Fall can will use the reaction to uh, make the Sen pit fiend hit one of the Erinjaeus since it missed. Ah, is that is that when they and miss? Within five any... feet. Now I within five feet. Oh, okay. is it is it me? Only me. I think I think it has think to be when me. you're the target. Never mind. I will send okay. to attack the one that hit him then. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. I'll just roll the other two attacks. Uh, that. Will that will that's a five plus fourteen nineteen that just hits, and then the last one. Oh, you're so lucky you've got four side up because one of these is a natural twenty, uh, the other is a twenty-seven, which uh, hits. So three will hit, 
you avoided a crit there. Um, and Fall gets an attack on, on the Pit Fiend. Yes, I rolled a 19 to hit. 19, uh, that just hits its AC. Awesome, and I rolled 16 damage. Okay. Um, just gonna roll to 19 plus 15 plus 31. Oh, that tail did a lot. Uh, 19 plus 15 plus 31. Um, so that is a total of 65, although you can uncanny dodge, uncanny dodge if you would like. Uh, yeah, I might do that. Yeah. <laughs> uncanny dodge, please. Yeah, I'm guessing you're going to uncanny dodge the tail. Yeah, yep. As, yep. Okay. So how much in total do I take? Uh, so minus... 49 once that's halved. So, again, taking away your temporary remaining... Oh, I've got so, the temporary hit points. Yeah. I'm so happy. The, oh. the, uh, 33 ish, I think. Yes. Carries he over. Is, there's just blood raining down, um, but it's fine. Um, yeah. And the, like, the horrible kind of like shadows that prob- will probably be coalescing around him because uh, otherwise he would have been down, but. Mm-hmm. Luckily, he's still standing, and it's probably just like weeping war and uh, Yeah, they're they're probably almost holding you aloft at this point. Yeah, he's looking very very not human at this point. I imagine. Yeah. Fun times. Yeah. It's all right. He's alive uh, for now. Yeah, the, in a manner uh, of speaking. The other pit fiends. Um, one is going to point towards you, Sevia, and go for a fireball. Um, and the other is going to point towards Fallen Conrad and go for a fireball. Counter spell. Which one are you counting for spelling, Beatrice? The one aiming at Fall and Conrad. Okay. And I'll counter spell the one aiming at me. Okay. Uh, Sevia, in your case, what level? Third. Third. Okay. Yeah, both fireballs, just nothing comes of them. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's your go, Savior. So I immediately get it back. Yeah. Game the system. Uh, cool. I had a plan, um, and then everything has gone awry. Yep. Uh, Beatrice is on five hit points. Conrad is on 16. Paul is on 46, I believe, and you are on 29. 35. I believe that... 35, okay, I must have missed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the inspiration. The bonus, yeah, bonus, the bonus inspiration heal, yep. yes. Yep. Okay, so... <laughs> um, the issue is I have a lot of very good stuff, uh, and most of it's concentration. But you know what? We, we make do with um, what we have. So... Um, <laughs> Bandicoot. Uh, so Conrad is currently surrounded, basically. Yeah, but he ha- he has got Fall there to kind of back him up. He has got Fall. Beatrice is on the ground. Yes. She's on the ground up the back all by herself. She is... She's good. She's good. Or are you saying that sarcastically, or are you saying that like you want me she to fly down there and just cure wounds? She oh, has a plan. Check. <laughs> okay. There's a plan if she lasts through this round. You can, you can see physically though, Beatrice is barely holding on. <sighs> Flips to cleric side. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, it's a hot minute until your turn, Beatrice. So, um... Yeah, if you go, if you go Cure Wounds, it's 1d8 plus 2, plus an additional d8 for every level above the first that you cast it. Yeah. Alright, well, see if you like... Oh, oh, oh. How far is Beat? Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. How far is Beatrice? from the giant horde of monsters? Um... 
you know what? She's pro she's probably within reach of you without having to to hit like to jump into the horde. Cool. And Conrad's surrounded, but Conrad is full. Ah! I'm rolling for it. Highs I go to Beatrice. Lows. A six. So, uh, Sevia is going to look kind of at the huge mess of creatures and and then look down in Beatrice. And in her head, she's just like, we need you. And then she's going to fly down to Beatrice, kind of grab her hands and be like, do you think it's working? Can you get back up there? And cast a... Uh, Fifth level cure wins. Even that seventh level for something special, are you? You never know when you're going to need to counter True. spell a big True. Boy. True. Um, so that is 5d8 plus 2. Okay, so Beatrice is healed for. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, eight plus eight is sixteen. Oh. Plus sixteen. Twenty-three, twenty-five points of healing for Beatrice. And yeah, CB just said, like, is it working? Can you do it? Get back up there. Can you convince her? I think I safety. Okay. Um, Unless you have anything with your bonus action, I believe that is your turn. Am I within distance to... In a while. Oh, I'm not within 30 feet. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, she flies like 10 feet in the air above Beatrice. And then, um, that's her turn. Okay. Uh, next is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Morton Tynan, who doesn't really have anything he can do at this point unless things get, uh, Closer. Um, actually, he's just going to be spamming low-level lightning bolts uh, at, in safe positions at the, the hordes that are charging towards his tower. Um, Horn Devils and Bone Devils are leading the charge. Uh, Zariel's go. Uh, Zariel is going to. Um, hmm. Zariel is gonna teleport. She's gonna teleport down to the ground to come face to face with Beatrice. What are you playing at? You stupid girl. That's her turn. Um, which brings us back to Be- fittingly Beatrice's turn. You notice the sword is floating down towards you and Zariel. This threw out your plans, didn't it? <laughs> oh, it did a little. It did a little. Ah. Um, Beatrice is going to stand up because she's still on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and just look Zariel right in the eyes and say, hey, 
I think I think it wants to come back to you I think you should take it I don't want it Roll me a persuasion check. Now I'm going to use. Uh, I have still have three DM inspirations. So yes. I'm going to use one of those. Yeah. Who was it, Paul, that you gave? Paul gave me bardic inspiration. inspiration yes, as so you well. have that as well. Yeah. So can I add the bardic inspiration to? So I you can. Could, add... You can choose to add that after you've rolled, as long as I haven't given you the. Uh, the result of the total. Okay. So, let me just remember all of the things that I've done to myself. Because I have... So that's... So before... I use the Bardic Inspiration, that's 30. Hey, do you want to use the Bardic Inspiration or are you going to save it? So does that mean you nat 20 this? No, I or got an got 18. I 18. 18. What's, what's the so other good. plus two? Did you get your plus five persuasion plus, plus the... Plus five from your channel oh. divinity. I miscounted the persuasion, so it's ah. yeah, twenty. Twenty-eight. Eight. Okay. Before I reveal the result, would you like to use the bardic inspiration or not? I will use the bardic inspiration. Okay. It was a D eight. That's another eight points. So 36. That's another eight. That's a 36. You see Zariel um, drop her hammer. And as the blade drifts into range, grasp onto its hilt. Now, uh, her hand trembling as she does so. As her fingers brush against it, she grimaces as radiant light sears her flesh. As her grip tightens, she gasps in pain, then speaks an oath through tears of confusion, sorrow, and dawning joy. I, Lariel, supplicate myself before the holy light of justice. If it should accept me, I vow to take up this blade once more in its service. Her words hang in the air for a silent moment, and she glances upward in agonized uncertainty. Then, as she is bathed in a brilliant wash of radiant light, her fiery halo disappears and feathers burst from her leathery wings. All of her diabolical features vanish as her angelic form is restored. At the sight of this blessed transformation, you see a, uh, a crack form in the sky and it bleeds out in light for a moment as you see this shot like massive figure of a radiant giant golden celestial mammoth with feathered wings one that you recognize from the memory as Zariel's um, celestial mount um, a holophant uh, uh, coming out from the uh, from this space, uh, Zariel 
uh, yeah, with with a bit of a moment still of ha still having control of Avernus, though not not for, not for much longer, but. She still has some grasp of it as this apotheosis is occurring. She um, holds all the fiends present still. And with a flash of light, you see all the devils here turn to ash and dust. Zariel breathes. A sigh of relief. Thank you all for what you have done. You don't know why you have done it. I thank you for my vote for this mercy. I will endeavor to correct what has been done here best I can. I forgive you. Thank you for your forgiveness, young child. I apologize for what I have put you through. Just sort of looks around and looks towards the others. Well, I dare say there's a lot to do. Yes. Let me. Uh, let me provide some um, relief for now. And uh, each of you returns to full hit points. Um. And in fact, you actually feel hardier than before um, as all mortal creatures that witnessed Zariel's apotheosis are surrounded. You all see twinkling wisps of the same light that transformed her. And you are all ble infused with a blessing of health. Um, which means, simply put, that uh, your constitution scores all increase by two, and the maximum for them all is now 22. Should any of you decide to... Permanently? Put... Yes. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, so we will, we will work that out. We've, we've still got a bit of aftermath to deal with in this episode, but... We will work that out um, between now and between the end of this episode and the start of the next one. But yes, you all you all feel significantly hardier than you were before. And you see. Zariel alongside the Holophant fly off into towards the direction of Elturel, the city that you arrived here atop. Well, that happened. Oh. <laughs> that was spectacular. A road plops down, like drops down, like it heels first into the ground next to fall as we descend. Well, that was, uh, yes, fixed rather quickly. Yes, mm. goodness, the whole army gone. Yes. It needed to be quick. Mm. Mm. Now we get through that. Excellent job, Beatrice. Thank yes. you. Good job. 
wasn't 100% sure that was going to work. But I guess luck was on my side. Luck and us. Well, that too. <laughs> Are you feeling quite all right? And she sort of looks at everyone in turn. Conrad looks over the fact that he just doesn't have the blade anymore, I presume. Or did Zara take it with her? Yeah, yeah Zara yes. take, Zariel took has it with it. her. Cora looks over like that the fact that just still has the wings and everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, has... Everything is still the same. Yep. We're uh, alive. That is that. <sighs> well, going off to tell Bell the good news then, I suppose. Yes. Yes. And hopefully he'll keep his end of the bargain. And then hope. Hopefully Arkan will, and then who knows? Maybe we'll be home before tea time. <laughs> Quite a tale to bring to tea time. Yeah, we, we defeated a whole arm here. Like, we survived at least. That's incredible. Honestly, I want to sleep for a week now, but... <laughs> Gosh. Uh, Phil just looks stunned by what's happened. Well, people don't do anything else. Conrad's going to start walking back to the tower, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Beatrice is going to fly back to the tower. Yeah, you do all still have your fly speeds. But yes. <laughs> Morden kind of hasn't I'm got that. I'm walking. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> That is entirely um, your prerogative. Matter of principle. Uh, CB is going to drop in large reduce on the fall. Hmm. Um, so fall will shrink back down. And uh, she'll give him like a little pat on the shoulder and she'll like you know, turn to pat Conrad on the shoulder and Conrad's already gone and she's just like, ah! And then she is going to actually um, look up at Mordenkainen where he is on his little balcony and be like, are you good up there? Yes. Uh, I haven't needed to stretch out the magic missiles quite as much as that in a while. Your assistance was appreciated. You did well out there. All of you did. Thank you. Um, we're going to come back inside now and discuss what to do next. Seems a very reasonable course of action. Yes, I thought so. I'll see you down. Good. I'll see you down in the entrance. She grabs Fall's hand and starts going inside. She is also walking. She has forgotten she can fly. <laughs> she, kinda, she, she probably suffered some head trauma even with full healing. So, mm. yeah. All right. We go inside. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as, as you all are uh, in the entrance all of the tower. Um, Mordenkainen reaches it from, from upstairs. Yes. Well, that was quite something. Yeah. Yes, yes it was. Is everyone well? Very well. <laughs> We're still here. It's barely past breakfast. Strange. Good to get things done and out of the way quickly. Indeed it is. Is 
So, what is your intention with the rest of the day? Is it is it a common occurrence for you to just uh, win a huge battle, a huge war? I wouldn't say common, but it's occurred once or twice before. Right, right. Okay, yes. I guess it would be um, not too shocking then. And you've been around as long as I have. Very few things continue to shock you. I'm sure you'll learn that in time. Yeah. I have a great confidence, in fact, that you'll learn that in time. And he gives a knowing look of sorts to Sevia. Pulls his clip back. Okay. Well, if we don't have any immediate plans, we're going to go and have a bath then. <laughs> of course. Um, he like looks around. He's like, <laughs> he's like, all right. And then he just walks <laughs> off. Uh, um. Yes. Well, uh, I do. We do have rather a line of of succession. It is. We don't really have to think from here. We just go to Bell, then we go to Arkan, and then we attempt to get the dial off of Arkan before he can go to wherever Tiamat is. True, true, and and then we can go home. Yes. Home. Good. That would be good. <laughs> right. Um, hmm. Before any planning, what about we, um, are we like raid Morden Kynan's like Sethers or something? I'm right here. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, in, in the many times that you've won battles before, have celebratory drinks, like, been part of it? They are not uncommon. Excellent. And would you like to, uh, um, and then would we be able to access your cellars? I will see what there is of interest. <laughs> and and he, he, potters, he potters to the kitchen, basically. <laughs> Well, that certainly is one thing that might draw Conrad out of his bath. Um, true, true indeed. Beatrice. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Very strange to think that it's all over. Yes. You have a whole new life to lead. Whatever that entails. Yes. Um. I, um, I don't know, it feels asinine to say, but uh, how do you feel? I'm not quite sure. Fair. Not sure any of us do. Um, but, uh, again, uh, congratulations. Beatrice just sort of nods. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, um, 
Mm-hmm. Maybe bring some peace to your your lost loved ones. Beatrice sort of shakes herself and like shakes her, the feathers of her wings out and just sort of turns around and walks off. <laughs> oh, I... Goes for a wander. She really hasn't changed all that much, has she? No, no, I suppose not. No, it just walks away. Hmm. Yes, I wonder if it's like that's uh, due to stuff that I say, but I think it might just be due to who she is. I think it is pretty firmly a, her problem. She, well, not a problem. She just decides when the conversation's done and then she exits it. And she feels no need to make an excuse, unlike the rest of us. True. It must be a simpler way to live. Oh, maybe. I didn't think I could bear it. Likewise. Well then, um, it looks like it's just the two of us for now. Yes, no, um, how are you, darling? I am very shocked by everything that went on. I've yes. never seen a war to that scale. Yes, it was rather, um, I've never seen war at all. Mm. I wish we could live lives we didn't have to. But I... We... We will. We... Yes. <laughs> Yes, when we get back. Yes. No more of this nonsense. (laughs) Although I guess it is quite a nice feeling, the fact that five people won against those odds. We did. Um, Darling, Mm -hmm. I have something I have to tell you. Oh, yes. Uh, this, who? So, you know how Morden kind of, she like pulls full like to the side so they're not standing in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> There's like a little bit of privacy. She's like, so Morden kind of gave me, and she thunks the staff on the ground twice, this, yes? It was not on its own merit that he lent it to me. He has, it is a loan, I'll be getting my own one, but he has plans for me. Oh yes, what's he doing? No, no, it's good, it's good. It, um, I didn't, I didn't know how to tell you last night, but, um, I, he, have you ever heard of the Circle of Eight? Woodfall have? Is it very Roll me a history check. It is a very high DC. All right. Bad Someone AC not versed in arc, like arcane history, like arcane practice. Eight. eight. No. Nope. Eighteen. Sorry. Uh, eight. Eighteen. Yeah, still probably not. Um. Uh, no. No. Right, no. Um, the Circle of Eight was a group of incredibly powerful mages that Mordenkind mm-hmm. informed. Uh, many people who have spells named after them. Uh, Big Beer is the one that comes to mind, but um, they formed a, a sort of council of mages, but it all fell apart uh, at, a, at a certain point. Um, but while that particular group maybe was not the best constructed, you know, n- not every team works quite as well together as, you know, those of us do, um, he still believes in the principle and the principle of having powerful magic users 
be able to represent and defend the worlds they are from, the planes they are from. And it is a very safe position to hold, mostly, um, and would not require, you know, it would only require, you know, certain trips away and all that kind of stuff. And Morden kind of has asked me with some training to be the representative of Fielo. Oh, oh wow. Um, Paul's gonna roll an, I'm gonna roll an insight check. Paul's just gonna kind of be like very taken aback and be like, I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but it's gonna roll insight. Um. A 21. It sounds it's, very prestigious. It is a very, very good thing. She is worried about Paul's reaction. So like after a moment of um, like uh, dithering, like, oh, uh, a fool's going to like come to a, like a, an understanding and be like, oh, Sylvia, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. It, um, I did, I just, I did. <laughs> it was very overwhelming. That's like such and... an honour and, 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 and that's something that you would be really good at. I mean, you're, you're so knowledgeable about all the magical stuff and everything. Thank you. I um, I honestly didn't really believe him when he said it, but it's it, it's a bit, it's a lot, but I think I can do it. You know, and it's it's a big deal. It's an important job, but I I want to I want to help people. Um. Yes, of course. No, I, I think you'd be excellent at that. I think he, he chose exactly the right person. He uh, had a rare moment of uh, good insight. <laughs> you really don't like him, do you? I'm, I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, don't. You don't have to like him just because he's... Well, one day he'll be my equal. Um, that's, ah, oh, sorry. And she's like flaps her hands really hard for a moment <laughs> and just kind of does like a silent scream. Hmm, um, it's just a lot to comprehend, you know? Yes, uh, that's incredible. So would you, um, would you still be working at your university? Maybe. Um, I have to finish studying first, but I, I like teaching. I like teaching people. And, and he said that mostly it would be, um, like I said, it, it strips away so I can still have it. And she kind of reaches out and like holds both of Paul's hands and she goes, I can still have a home. Um, it's just every couple of weekends, I'll go off on a little business trip. And, you know, you could come with me as well if you wanted, but you don't have to. This plane jumping and all this it doesn't have to be your life anymore it it can just be my work and and we can just be normal the rest of the time and I, I would like to teach if I can when I'm not doing that I feel looks like someone like uh relieved at the um stating that she would still uh, be with him essentially um that sounds wonderful. I, I'm sure you'll be able to do both if you want. And um, I don't know. I, I'll see what I want to do in the future. I um, I don't know if I'll ever want to do any more of this kind of stuff. It's kind of what I was trying to avoid in the past. But um, I like the option and I, I'll be happy to support you and... Um, It sounds wonderful opportunity. It is. And anything you want, I I can make it happen. Either through the avenues this will open or through sheer stubbornness. Because <laughs> I want you 
you make me happy. I want to make you happy. Not just now, but but as long as you'll have me. I want this to be, if you want, I know it hasn't been very long, but I want this to be forever. Well, kind of like that covers like the his blush with her hand and says, um, yes, that's, that's what I want too. I want us to be together for, yes, forever if possible. I'm so happy to hear you feel the same. I, I know I felt that way about you long before I realized it was this. I felt the same, honestly. I, I haven't really felt feelings like this for many people before. I didn't know exactly what I was feeling. Yes, how did it I? <laughs> I just knew I wanted you around always, even when we were just friends. Exactly. It's so, it feels so rare and special to find someone that we share so many similarities with you and they're being so different. And then we just, I feel like we just work together. I, I think we do too. Um, and she like steps a little closer and she's like rocking on like the balls of her feet. And she kind of looks a little teary as she has for like a good half of this conversation. <laughs> and she goes like, um, stop me if it's too soon, but I love you. <laughs> Paul kind of just like puts both hands over his face. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is it too soon? I'm sorry. And she like tries to pull his hands away from his face. <laughs> she's like, I can take it back, I can take it back, I'm sorry. No, don't take it back. Well, are you, I'm sorry, are you crying? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, I don't know how to. <laughs> I care about you so much. I never thought I'd bet you that from anyone. Well, I mean it. And you don't have to say it back if you're not if you're not ready. I, I feel things very hard and very fast. And um if you're not ready, that's that's fine. I just I feel like you need to know. I I love you. You're my person. <laughs> Full kind of like when you um, want to be or not. <laughs> and it leans into an embrace and kind of like rests his head, like leans his head into her shoulder and it's like, um, you're my person too. I <laughs> thank you. Um, I love you too. <laughs> oh, and Sylvia just like <laughs> throws her little arms around them. <laughs> and it's like crying a little bit and that's, just kind of swaying from side to side and that's where we're gonna leave it for this week oh. a rare sweet oh. note hearing oh. about us god that never <laughs> happens <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening thank you for listening see you next time bye, bye. bye.